Okay, so now we're going to uh, continue on number eight. Uh, you've got some ordered pairs, and first we want to graph it. So negative seven, negative one. Negative three, three. Negative five, four. Okay, so this should be negative five, negative four. So um, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four, five, negative four. Okay, about right there. And then um, let's see. And then D is negative nine, negative eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's. Um, sort of like this. It's not drawn to scale, obviously. I didn't use graph paper. But at least you can see uh, to check the slope of AB and DC to start with. Uh, so for the slope of AB, um, we go to the document. And negative 7, negative 3 and negative one, positive three. Okay, so for AB we get one. For DC, okay, D we have negative nine and negative five and negative eight and negative four. So that's also one um, and since that's parallel, um, these are also going to be parallel, so that's going to be yes. So you get yes for that one. Okay. Um, the next one, we have the equation for the line parallel to that that contains that point. So I circled the seven nines because that's my slope. And you go y minus 4 equals 7 ninths x minus 4. So think about this as x1, y1. So y minus y1 equal that. Uh, now, I'm not quite done with it because it says put it in slope intercept form. And so I've still got a little bit of work to do on it. Um, I need to distribute this, and so I get y minus 4 equals 7 ninths x minus 28 ninths. And then I want to add 4, so negative 28 ninths plus uh, 4. Uh, that gives you 8 ninths. So plus eight ninths. So that's your answer to number nine. And that does match uh, what we were expecting. Okay. Okay, then um, on this one it says, are the lines perpendicular? They sort of look like it, uh, but let's check to see if our slopes are opposite reciprocals. On L1, you're going down to... and write um, five, six, yeah, six. Okay, so uh, for line one, we use negative one, zero, and five, negative two, so we're going down to and then right six. So down two, right six means negative one third. Then for line two, um, we're going from negative four to five, so you're going up nine. 
and you're going from 1 to 4, so you're going right 3. And 9 thirds is the same as 3. So what you notice about this is your product of these is negative 1. So is it perpendicular? It's going to be one of the yes answers. And because it does not equal, no, it's because it equals. So that's B. So that's number 10. All right. Uh, number 11, uh, which one's perpendicular to that line? Uh, the thing you want to do is solve for y. So we have a slope of negative 3 fourths. Uh, this um, first one would have a slope of negative 4, um, so it's not that. If I look at B, we have negative 6y equal negative 8x plus 12, and divide by negative 6, y equal positive 4 thirds x minus 2. Yeah, so if we have negative 3 fourths and positive 4 thirds, uh, those are opposite reciprocals, and so that's the right answer. Good job. Okay, then you have the type from today. So um, add these up, and it's probably greater. Let's see. Um, 60 plus 51 plus... 71, you get 182, and so it's spherical because it's greater. Okay, and then this one, um, explain how the property of spherical compares to what's true in Euclidean. Um, so that's the one part we haven't really talked about. In Euclidean, um, it have to be all 60 degrees for each. But in spherical, you could have 70 each. You could have 80 each. You could have had 65 each, so forth, random numbers. Uh, so what we want for this one is in Euclidean, they all have to have the same uh, measures because they're always 60. And um, it wouldn't be the one about the 90 degrees. Um, this one doesn't make sense at all. B, sum of 90 to form equiangular. Um, yeah, so that's A. So in Euclidean, it's always 60, but in spherical, it could be any number. Um, 61 each would work, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, that's number 13. It's A. Number 14, uh, determine whether the properties of Euclidean are true and spherical. Uh, two lines that are perpendicular to the same line do not intersect. Um, so the example, or actually the, the counterexample to that is this one because you've got right angles here um, that are not um, intersecting. So that's A. Uh, let's see, the next one, if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two of another, then the third angles are congruent. Um, that's going to be uh, this one because these two angles are equal and then um, that one uh, could be anything. It's open-ended. Uh, D could be any. Okay, and then this one, there could be at most one right angle in the triangle. Uh, that's false. Uh, you could have three in spherical. And then describe a line segment in spherical. Um, 
arc. Yeah, it's going to be the one with the arc. And so this is a... Okay, so that's the end of the review.